while you're talking about like having my on other chains, like I, I can only imagine like the type of logistics and developer coordination that has to happen to bridge my to other chains or get my on other chains. Cause like, if you think about it, like in my mind, my on polygon, and then you've got my on like, I know y'all are on cello. Like the, to me, those are like two completely different assets. Cause you have to take into account like the base layer protocol as well. So like what, what kind of logistics and hurdles have y'all had to go through to bridge my to all these different chains and do y'all deploy your protocol natively or do you just mint the my on polygon and then bridge it to those other chains or a combination of both probably at the beginning yeah uh, there was a little bit of minting on polygon and then bridging um which is why like you you see some remnants of that uh in the phantom deployments but in general We've, uh, we deploy our own contract on every uh, chain. So if you think, yeah, we deploy the entirety of Cheetah at some point, but it's more of a stage uh, process. So stage one will be deploying the stable coins, deploying the governance token. Then from there, we, we provide liquidity on one side of a bridge. And so the idea of us controlling the canonical token on every chain gives us more control over, okay, tomorrow we want to deploy vaults and we don't have to ask, I don't know, Seller Bridge or Seabridge to, um, you know, give us control over it because otherwise they will be the ones minting into the vaults, which is a huge risk uh, depending on what, what could happen, you know, because it could be the official bridge here or relay chain there or all bridge or C bridge or any swap. There's a lot of bridges and there's some that I probably haven't mentioned yet. Um, and so with that in mind, controlling the, um, the canonical token allows us to then, uh, create swapping systems, or I think we, uh, we'll call it the, the hub and the hub allows you to swap your relay my or your any my or whatever my into the canonical my up to a certain amount so then we can uh, control the, the different bridges that we're on and give them kind of like a an, a specific amount a limit that they can swap into any chain which lets us um, build a more robust and multi-chain system because now there's multiple bridges that you can use not just one yeah, and how many chains are y'all on right now? Like, how many different chains do you have my deployed on? 20 chains. That is a lot. Yeah, we're the most cross-chain stable, at least decentralized stable coin. So uh, a, lot, a lot of deploying, a lot of uh, BD, a lot of managing, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that's just kind of a testament to, like you said, your team and the need for this asset in the crypto market in general. And so y'all, you know, y'all have scaled very quickly in terms of like daily active users, total value locked, total chains deployed, I guess is another metric you could look at. Like, what do you attribute all that growth to? I think um, something that's very unique to Cheetah versus other projects is our uh, focus on partnerships, right? Um, a lot of projects might try to build everything in-house or, you know, by themselves. But I think, you know, we've done a lot to, you know, work with others and put interoperability first. Like we could make our own interest bearing tokens or we could partner with Beefy, right? And use their interest bearing tokens. We could make our own bridge or we could partner with multi-chain, right? So with these different like steps, we, we create a system that benefits everybody for helping Mai, right? So in spooky swap or in quick swap, you know, if you can mint Mai against quick, right? Then quick swap's not gonna, it's gonna have an incentive to you know, help promote my, right? Because that means more people are locking up quick. And so if you do these different kinds of games in different chains, right? Uh, it's everybody's stable coin. It's not just like some uh, closed system that you create.